Welcome to the video version of the Managing Kubert VMs with Ansible blog. My name is Felix Matoschek. Infrastructure teams managing virtual machines and the end users of these systems make use of a variety of tools as part of their day-to-day -day world. One such tool that is shared amongst these two groups is Ansible, an agentless automation tool for the enterprise. To simplify both the adoption and usage of Kubert, as well as to integrate seamlessly into existing workflows, the Kubert community is excited to introduce the release of the first version of the Kubert collection for Ansible, called Kubert Core, which includes a number of tools that you do not want to miss. In this video, we will review some of the features and their use associated with this initial release. Before diving into the feature set of the collection itself, let's review why the collection was created in the first place. While incorporating Kubernetes and Kubernetes has the potential to disrupt the workflows of teams that typically manage virtual machine infrastructure, including the end users themselves, the following paradigms remain. First, Kubernetes and the resources associated with Kubernetes can be represented in a declarative fashion. Second, in many cases, Communicating with Kubert virtual machines makes use of the same protocols and schemes as non-Kubernetes-based environments. Third, the management of virtual machines still represents a challenge. For these reasons and more, it is only natural that a tool like Ansible is introduced within the Kubert community. Not only can it help manage the Kubert Kubernetes resources, like virtual machines, but it can also enable the extensive Ansible ecosystem for managing guest configurations. So again, we are excited to introduce the Kubert Core Ansible collection. Let's start with an overview of the included capabilities of the collection. As part of the initial release, an Ansible inventory plugin and the management module are included. The collection itself is available in the same distribution location containing Ansible automation content, Ansible Galaxy. Let's have a closer look at the resources encompassing the collection. First, let's have a look at the dynamic Ansible inventory. To work with Kubert virtual machines in Ansible, they need to be available in Ansible's host inventory. Since Kubert is already using the Kubernetes API to manage virtual machines, it would be nice to leverage this API to discover hosts with Ansible too. This is where the dynamic inventory of the Kubert Core collection comes into play. With this dynamic inventory capability, you can query the Kubernetes API for available virtual machines in a given namespace or namespaces, along with additional filtering options such as labels. To allow Ansible to find the right connection parameters for a virtual machine, the network name of a secondary interface can also be specified. Under the hood, the dynamic inventory uses either your default kubectl credentials or credentials specified in the inventory parameters to connect to a cluster. Now, let's have a look at the Kubert VM module. While working with existing virtual machines is already quite useful, it would be even better to control the entire lifecycle of Kubert virtual machines from Ansible. This is made possible by the Kubert VM module provided by the Kubert Core Collection. The Kubert VM module is a thin wrapper around the Kubernetes core K8S module and allows you to control the essential fields of a virtual machine's specification. In true Ansible fashion, this module tries to be idempotent as possible and only makes changes to objects within Kubernetes if necessary. With its wait feature, it is possible to delay further tasks until a virtual machine was successfully created or updated and is in the ready state or it was successfully deleted. Now that I've provided an introduction to the feature set, it is time to demonstrate how you can get up to speed using the collection, including a few examples to showcase the capabilities provided by the collection. Please note that as a prerequisite, Ansible needs to be installed and configured along with a working Kubernetes cluster with Kubert and a Kubert cluster network add-ons operator installed. Cluster also needs to have a secondary network configured, which can be attached to a virtual machine so that the machine can be reached from the Ansible control node. The following items will be covered in the demo. First, we will install the collection from Ansible Galaxy. Second, we will create a namespace and a secret with an SSH public key. Third, we will create a virtual machine. Fourth, 
we will list the available virtual machines on the cluster. Fifth, we will execute a command on the virtual machine. Sixth, and last, we will remove all created resources again. So let's get started. First, let's start by installing the Kubernetes core collection from Ansible Galaxy. This will also install the Kubernetes core collection as a dependency. Next, let's create a namespace to work with. To set up SSH public key authentication with newly created machines, first we need an SSH key pair. Next, the public key needs to be stored in a secret so the Access Credentials API of Kubernetes can use it to inject it into newly created virtual machines. Before creating a new virtual machine, I will show you that there are no virtual machines on the cluster right now. To create a virtual machine, I have prepared a playbook at which we will have a brief look now. As you can see, this playbook is using the Kubert VM module and it's setting most of the available parameters. To get a closer look at this playbook, please consult the written version of this block. To get an overview of all available parameters, you can also have a look at the documentation of the collection. To create the virtual machine, I will run the playbook now. Now that the playbook completed successfully, the defined virtual machine is running in the Kubernetes Ansible namespace, which can be confirmed by querying for virtual machines in this namespace. With the virtual machine deployed, it is eligible for use in Ansible automation activities. Let's illustrate how it can be queried and added to an Ansible inventory dynamically using the plugin provided by the Kubernetes core collection. To configure the inventory, I have created an inventory file at which we will have a look now. You can see this is using the Kubert Core Kubert plugin and it's configuring one connection. This connection is set up so it queries for virtual machines in the Kubert Ansible namespace. It is using the secondary network to connect to those virtual machines and there is a label selector which queries for the label app with the value test. Use the Ansible inventory command to confirm the virtual machine becomes added to the Ansible inventory. You can see this work and the test VM in the Kubert Ansible namespace is available. Finally, we can make use of the host by querying for all of the facts exposed by the machine using the setup module of Ansible. You can see this was able to successfully gather facts about the virtual machine. These are all the usual facts you would expect from a regular virtual machine. It is also possible to run raw commands on the virtual machine with the command module of Ansible. Let's do this by getting the contents of the OS release file in the virtual machine. As you can see, this command ran successfully and we are running Fedora 38. As the last step, we are going to complete the life cycle of the virtual machine by destroying it again. For this I have prepared a playbook. Let's have a look. You can see this playbook is using the Kubert VM module again, this time setting the state of the virtual machine to absent. After deleting the VM, we are also going to delete the namespace we created earlier. For this, we are using the K8S module of the Kubernetes core collection. Here we are also setting the state of the namespace to absent. To conclude this demo, let's run the playbook. Again, 
For more information on the playbooks, have a look at the written version of this blog. For more information on the collection's contents, including the full list of parameters and options, have a look at the collection's documentation. You can find it in the description of this video. While the content included within this video only provided a brief introduction and usage of the newly released Kubrit Core collection, it is the hope that it helped showcase the integration now available between Kubrit and Ansible, including how easy it is to manage Kubrit assets. The next potential iteration could be to expose the virtual machine via a Kubernetes service instead of a secondary interface as it was covered in this walkthrough. Not only does this leverage existing models outside of the Kubernetes ecosystem, but it also helps to enable a uniform method for exposing content. Interested in learning more, providing feedback or contributing? Head over to the Kubernetes Core GitHub repository to continue your journey and get involved. I hope you learned something new and useful in this video. Thank you for watching.